welcome everyone of us into the fellowship of the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement this particular day, this particular Sunday. Title of uh, the message is Israel was freed from Egypt eventually. Israel was freed from Egypt eventually. And then, as you know very well, the messages that come out from the pulpit of many colors of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement are ones that are considered revelation messages or messages of the hour. And um, the meaning of that is this. These are messages that are inspired to address the situation of the hour or of the period. Now we are in a particular situation at such a time like this. And the Lord is wanting us to listen to what we're going to listen to, to draw from what happened in times past so that our hearts can be established and so that we can remain in his overall end time program. Now before we go into the message proper, we want to join our music ministry and then take some inspiration as we sing a number of songs. We are going to sing the following. One, the sun has set me free. Song number 86. Two, God to whom I pray. Song number 251. Three, glorious freedom. Song number 101. Let's go. Listen to the music ministry and join that we may take inspiration from what we are doing. Song number 86. Oh, the son that made me free, made me free. 
Egyptian bondage set his children free, who ran down bread from heaven, all the pilgrim were, is a God I pray. People through the port and sea, and from Egyptian bondage set his children free. Who rain down bread from heaven on the pilgrim way? Is the God to whom I pray? Just the same today, just the same today as when He led His people through the sea. His trustful child of me. In this world I see The God who doeth wonders Is just, just the same today The God who rescued Daniel From the lion's den And from the fear and fullness Of the three young men Who speaks in constellations With his voice obey is the God to whom I pray Just the same today, just the same today As when he led his people through the sea His trustful child of me For in his word I see The God who do what wonders is just the same today Tempest with a world divine And on the clouds of sorrow makes his rainbow shine Who from the tomb of Jesus from the stone away Is the God to whom I pray Just the same today, just the same today As when he led his people through the sea his trustful child of me, for in his word I see that God who do what wonders is just the same today. The God who clothes the lily in his robe of snow, who in the barren desert makes his rivers flow, the God who lifts the sinner from the miry clay. God to whom I pray, just the same today, just the same today, as when he led his people through the sea, his trustful child of me, for in his when I see, the God who do what wonders, is just the same today. Song number three we are singing is titled Glorious Freedom. Song number 101. Once I was bound by sin, 
galling fetters, chained like a slave, I struggled in vain, and I received the glorious freedom when Jesus broke my fetters in twain. Glorious freedom, wonderful freedom. No more in chains of sin I repine. Jesus, the glorious emancipator, now and forever, he shall be mine. yet everything that is done under the sun, the Lord that knoweth the situation of every person's heart. I come before you, Lord, in glory this day on the behalf of myself and all the people that are gathered together in the various locations of the watchman to ask, great Father in heaven, that you speak unto each and every one that the house may be consolidated, eternal rock of ages, that every heart will be tutored, because it is stated in the scripture that cannot be broken. It shall all be taught of God. And when we are taught of God, Lord, what 
other teacher do we require? Blessed Redeemer, let every person be taught of God, even for the sake of the day in which we live, in the name of Jesus Christ. And let every heart be established. Thank you, Lord, in glory for answer to prayers. I pray that thy word should minister healing, and minister uh, consolation, and minister faith, and everything that has to do with uh, genuine Christianity in the lives of the people, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, because I'm sure you've answered our prayers. We have prayed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord, and I hear the people say amen everywhere. Amen. And amen. Welcome you back to the fellowship of the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. And this uh, uh, message that we have at hand is uh, in continuation of uh, what the Lord had begun a uh, number of weeks back as a result of a situation that we found ourselves in a country that is called N. And the Lord is uh, making me to bring across to every individual that is concerned the word of uh, assurance from the bosom of the Father. You can be sure that in the place where you have found yourself, we have God's word. His word is with us, and what I mean is his very mind for every occasion is with us, for every period is with us. And you do not need a lot of evidence because you've seen evidences over the period. Even the present day that we find ourselves have been told us long, long ago. Now we come to draw from this uh, message that we have at hand. The title again is Israel was freed from Egypt eventually. Now, in the course of this message, we're going to see, we're going to review how that uh, this nation Israel, how it was uh, formed and how it was uh, uh, made to go to Egypt and how they progressed and were strong and how that at a point in time the situation changed and then they became enslaved. They became laborers to the host country and then they suffered terribly. And how that in the course of time, because they were in the program of God in particular, the Lord decided to fulfill what he had promised, to bring them out after 400 years. And then he designed the mechanism for that emancipation. But guess what? There was a terrible opposition against that mechanism which he had designed. But then, the good news is that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the very end of the day, now Israel was eventually freed from the bondage of Egypt. And after that we have reviewed it, I will show you how that a nation called En is a kind of Israel. And I will let you know why I said that. So meanwhile, let's go review the thing that happened or the historical fact of a nation called Israel. That nation is still existent right now in the Middle East, but we are looking at what happened in times past. I want you to take note of this. Everything that you find written in the scripture 
is historical fact. Job was a personage. Job was a person. Job was not fiction. Jesus Christ was a personage. It was not fiction. The cross was a, was a reality, not fiction. In fact, I want to tell you that all the religions of this world that we hear about, they are not fictions. They are realities. And so when you hear of Abraham, Abraham was a personage. When you hear of Lot, Lot was a personage. When you hear of the prophets or the apostles or whatever, or Adam or Noah, these people lived in this world. Remember, passage of time does not change anything. Passage of time does not change the existence of God. Passage of time does not change what has been stated. It took 430 years, 430 long years before that which God had said to Abraham concerning his descendants in the land of Egypt took place. 430 years was not 430 days. It was not 430 weeks. It was not 430 months. It was not 430 minutes. 430 solid years. But at the end of the day, that which was scheduled came to pass. So pay attention and listen to the story of Israel and listen to how it will connect to the story of a nation called En. I go to read about that, the story of that nation, the origin, and how that they went into another nation according to all that the Lord had said in times past. And how that in the course of time, in the course of their expansion, that other nation turned around and then became a nightmare unto them. But then at the appropriate time, the God of heaven, who knows the end from the beginning, schemed their freedom, even though that freedom was vehemently, was stubbornly resisted. But the Lord, who is the master of circumstances, to whom everything is an agent, brought the people out according to his word. And how that this is uh, what God had designed to do, even concerning the nation called En. I will show you how that the situation in that of Israel in Egypt can be likened to the situation of the peoples of the nation called En in the land of En. In Genesis chapter 15, We read concerning what God said about this nation. Genesis chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a shorty that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come here hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. That is what God said to Abraham long, long ago. And then eventually Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat his 12, the 12 brethren and then these people multiplied 
And then there was a situation that made these people to migrate into Egypt. And then we have their migration recorded in this place where we are going to read now. And we are reading from Exodus chapter 1. From verse 1, now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Isaac, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and was a city mighty. And the land was filled with them. I've just read of the entry and expansion of this nation. And then, let's quickly go to see what happened? An arrangement that was put in place by a particular uh, king of Egypt, a particular king of Egypt that rose up but did not recognize the progenitors and the forebears of Israel. And so they decided that they should be their slaves. And verse 8 said, Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on. Let us deal wisely, softly with them. Let them multiply and it come to pass. But when they fall out, fall it out any war. They join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And verse 13 says, And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. All their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. And you know, not only was uh, this nation impoverished and then tortured and suffered, the people who held them into captivity even planned extermination, decimation. And here we have information on that. And verse 15 says, And the king of Egypt spake unto the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Chipra, and the name of the other poor. And he said, when you do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew women and sit them upon the stools, if he be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if he be a daughter, then she shall leave. Listen, the intention is as follows. It is a plan of decimation. It's a plan of extermination. Now, if be a son, he dies. But if he be a daughter, she lives. Intention is as follows. In the course of time, it will be only women, 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 female, female. And then the Egyptians will marry off all those females in the course of time, and there will be no Israel again. That was intention. But God made these uh, women, these midwives, not to do the bidding of the wicked king. Verse 17, but the, 
Midwives feared God and did not, as the king of Israel, king of Egypt rather, commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwife said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. For they are lively and are delivered before the midwives come on in unto them to do their business of midwifery. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and were very mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that God made them houses. Now the king did not stop there, and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, he shall cast into the river, and every daughter he shall save alive. Now, these people were in torment, in trouble all the days of their life. They had that tax master that were set. And then, you know the story of the slaves of old. The slaves of old did not have their minds. The slaves who did not have their freedom did not have any leisure. They didn't have any holiday. It was walking and doing the will of their master that they were doing 24-7. And so that is how it was with the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. And then the problem and their incarceration and their inconveniences and all the things they were subjected to came to a climax, came to a height, came to a zenith, and they cried out unto God. Listen to me attentively. We are rehearsing Israel in Egypt. He came to, to, to a head, and then they cried out unto God. And then the Lord, the God who hears prayers, the Lord who remembers at every point in time what he has said in time's past, the Lord who said to Jeremiah, I will wash over my word to perform it. That is, I'll be washing. The word has gone out and I'll be washing. I'll be following it. At the appropriate time, I will make it to come to pass. Now, he remembered that he had spoken to their forebears, even to Abraham long, long ago, 400 plus years ago. And I said, this is the time of emancipation. I am making an arrangement to effect that. And so he made the arrangement. Wonderful arrangement. Look at what happened. And then in chapter 2, and thou went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife the daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that she was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Listen to me. God was a person that was behind everything. Take note, Moses, goodly child, handsome person, very, very likable. That's the meaning. And then the woman was not considering Will I throw away this likable, this, this fantastic baby, this, uh, this uh, handsome baby, this lively baby, this healthy baby? No, I don't throw him away. Listen to me. If Moses was born crippled, that would have been a tendency for the woman to say, well, let's do away with this. God is a person that was behind the whole thing. And then the woman would not do the bidding of the king. And uh, verse 3 says, 
And when she could not, no, no longer hide him, she took for him the ark of bulrushes and dubbed it, that is, pitched it with lime and with pish, that it became waterproof, and put the child therein, taking a basket and then putting a, a cellophane, waterproof material, within it and outside it, plastered it, inside and outside, so that it became waterproof. And then he put the child inside there. And led the child in the flax by the river's brink, that is, uh, the shrubs and the tender uh, plants that uh, the wind is carrying here and there, and put the child there. And then, and then, verse 4 says, and his sister stood afar off. The sister that we are talking about is Miriam. Listen to me attentively. Miriam was about five years, or say, yes, five years, because Aaron, who was junior to Miriam, was some near three years uh, uh, older than Moses. And so, God is the one that is in all of this. And then that little girl went and stood by to know what was going to happen. Why am I telling the story? You need to listen to this story so that when I now begin to link, link the story to what the Lord wants to do presently, you will not be in doubt. You will not be in doubt. That's why we're going to these details. And now, and now the girl was standing by. Let me know what's going to happen. God was behind all of that. And then what happened? Verse 5. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. Listen to me. God is the one that inspired, that brooded, the spirit of God brooded around Pharaoh's daughter. Listen to me. Spirit of God can brood on somebody, not inside somebody. We brood and then will influence the person. And the person will say a thing, and the person will do a thing, but the spirit that made the person to do that thing is not, was not living inside. So the spirit of God was not living inside the daughter of Pharaoh, but moved her at that point in time before the waves carried the child away. Before, before the, 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 the wind would move the waters or carry the child away. Now the woman came to wash herself. And I mess. We are keeping wash, walking up and down so that nobody can intrude in the place where she came to bat. And then he saw the, the basket and now sent for, for it. And then as soon as they brought the child, child was crying, he had pity upon him. And the junior, senior sister arrived. And now, who put the sense into the senior sister, that five year, six year old person? Who put the sense? The person that put the sense is still the Spirit of God, brooded upon her. And then he said to the lady, And I go and call you, not the mother. That's not what she said. He didn't say, can I go and call you the mother of this, girl, this child? He said, can I go and call you a nurse? If you are saying, can I go and call you a mother, it might be difficult. Can I go and call you? Let's read. And uh, verse 7, then said this, his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women? that she may nurse the child for thee. That's wisdom. Who gave that wisdom unto a five-year-old girl 
or six-year-old girl, maximum. It was the Spirit of God. God was in all that. This was his mechanism of bringing the people, and he began to, uh, he began to package it from a man going to marry a woman and then a child being born, a goodly child, and so on and so forth. And you know what? And the lady obliged. Go. And then the girl went and called her mother. And then the, the woman came and the, uh, the pharaoh's daughter said, take the child they will nurse the child for me. I pay you your wages. God was inside. And then the woman took the child away. At the end of the day, now the child was brought to Pharaoh's daughter, and Pharaoh's daughter named him Moses because he said, I drew him out of the water, and now he became her son and treated her as her son. And uh, now that is it. And then as time was going on, now in accordance with God's plan, in accordance with God's plan, which Moses knew by some intuition. He knew it that there is something that God has packaged and that thing must come to pass. And so, because of that thing that God has packaged, I am not going to, I'm not going to hook myself onto the, onto the goodies of the palace and become a pharaoh possibly in the course of time and forget the people with whom God has something to do. I'm not going to do that. And then at the appropriate time, the Lord now spotted the individual and said, you will I use to do the thing that I had told your forebears long, long ago. And here we go. As we go read from chapter 3, of Exodus. Exodus chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared. Unto him a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush was not consumed, was not born. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh, either put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. For he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their tax masters. For I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, 
that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And uh, he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, it shall serve God upon this mountain. Now listen to me attentively. Now the die has been cast. The individual, the instrument of deliverance has been chosen and has been appointed. And God is now good to go. And when he had convinced him that he should go, and when Moses had been convinced, now Moses elected to go. And then he connected him to his uh, senior brother and then and told them to go and then tell the king of Egypt that the time was up that the children of Israel should leave the land. But you know what? Now came the stiff opposition. Now came the stiff opposition. Pharaoh said, Who is that Lord? I do not know him. You are talking rubbish. I don't understand what you are talking about. In fact, after that initial demand, their case was made worse. What are you talking about? You are idle. That is the reason you are talking about uh, you move away. I don't understand. I don't know who you are talking about. But then, you know the story very well, just as I do. And now as a result of uh, that refusal, as a result of that stubbornness, as a result of that ego, as a result of saying, who is the Lord? Then the Lord himself decided to harden his heart so that he will show him who the Lord was. That's what happened. Don't try to make it good. Don't try to say, ah, God didn't harden his heart. God hardened his heart. God is the one that hardened his heart because he had already hardened his heart. He had already said, what are you talking about? But, to cut a long story short, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what happened? Let's see what happened. At the tail end of the day, at the tail end of the day, in chapter 14, even after they had been let go, and then they were going, and then the man said, I regret my action. These people must be brought back. They must be brought back to serve us. They must be brought back. It cannot happen. Was I sleeping? Did they give me rum? Was I intoxicated at the time that I did what I did? Then he mobilized all his military. And they went after the people. And then the Lord showed himself strong. That he was the one that caused the shots. Praise God. God is the one that caused the shots in all the sides and in all the kingdoms. In the kingdom of mammals, he caused the shots. In the kingdom of bears, he caused the shots. In the kingdom of spirits, he caused the shots. In the kingdom of human beings, he caused the shots. And so, arranged what he arranged, and then emancipation became a reality. And then what happened at the end of the day? In Exodus chapter 14, we find the eventual freedom. Exodus. We're reading from chapter 14, from verse 26. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. 
And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen and all the hosts of the Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. The children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. And then the words, this song of Moses. Oh, praise God. That was the song of Moses. What I can call Moses' uh, um, Magnificat. Moses' Magnificat, as well as Miriam's Magnificat as a result of what God had done. In chapter 15, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea. And he went on and on, and when he finished, his senior sister took over and called the women into dances. Remember that I have told you that at the end of the day, in the course of the circumstance we find ourselves, we will be on the streets marching the march of praise. Hallelujah. We will be on the streets in a nation called N, marching the march of praise to God. Take it. That is what must happen. Now, what is the similarity between what we see that happened with the children of Israel and then the children of the nation called N? The two scenarios are the same. The bulk of the children of the nation called N are in the overall end time program of the Lord, instruments, being ordained instruments for actualizing the overall end time program of God. Not only that, the nation N have been designed to be taken over. And then we need as a connecting rod. The Lord takes over other nations for his end time business. This is revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is that which is gotten by the mechanism of the spirit of insight, the spirit of insight that is showing what is in the mind of God, the spirit of God making somebody know what is in the mind of God and what he is thinking at a particular point in time or what he has designed. So that is what you are hearing. God has already ordained that the nation called N, who happens to be a nation filled with, with honey, filled with wonderful, fantastic resources, particularly even the human resources that he requires, the spiritual human resources that he requires for the for the business of restoration for the present day, that nation 
is in God's overall program. Very strategic. But unfortunately, unfortunately, the populace of this nation happen to be in a kind of bondage in that nation. Like children of Israel were in bondage, were impoverished, were, were being dead with in the land of Egypt. Now this place that's filled with uh, bread and honey and everything, which in the program of God has uh, been elected to be part, to be the, the major instrument of causing restoration and the recreation of uh, human beings in this last time, now is not well, it has not been well with all the people that God has elected. It's not been well with them at all. If you talk of uh, the percentage of the people that are impoverished, the percentage is very high compared to the percentage of people that may, may not have uh, plenty of problem. Now, and I can show you a few things that are likened to the things that the children of Israel saw in Egypt, on that went in Egypt. And in fact, the things that I'm going to show you, there are even worse scenarios than what those people saw. Listen, in that place where they were, there was extermination that was planned. Do you know that in the place called N, do you know that there is hunger, extermination? Hunger, can, hunger is wanting to cause extermination. Do you know that there are things that are called N deaths? N death. N death. N is qualifying the death. Death means that is D E A T H and deaths. You ask me what do I mean? What do I mean? Now there are situations on the highways, there are circumstances in the places that that give health care that are in such a situation that when you go there, you die. But if that situation is taken to another place, you live. There are deaths that are called end deaths. The deaths that are caused by terrible highways, they are end deaths. The deaths that are caused by maroodas and by people, kidnappers, and all the evil people that became evil as a result of uh, being pushed into evil, they are all end deaths. End is qualifying the death. It wouldn't have been if, there were, if they, those people were in some other nation. So you find that there is a lot of uh, evil that has befallen the people. People have committed suicide, a thing that was alien in times past. Now, now cases of suicide of young men plunging into the lagoon. That is end death. Cases of accidents, accidents that we are created, that, are, that, that we are caused as a result of lawlessness. And lawlessness 
that is caused as a result of something that happened unto human beings. All these are, all the deaths that result from these circumstances are end deaths. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. There are people that have been forced into migration, migration of death. And they went from the nation called En through the Sahara Desert and now arrived North Africa, heading to Europe. But multitudes of the people that left the nation En did not reach Northern Africa. They perished in the wilderness. They perished in the desert. And those that reached entered the most violent sea of the world, the Mediterranean Sea, and some did not reach their destinations. Listen to me. This is a place where the things that happened in Egypt to the children of Israel is a shite play to the things that happen to people that are in this place. In, this con- in the country called En. People are running away from land flowing with milk and honey and then moving to the places, going to making the journeys of death, migrations of death, and some are making the migrations of evil, of uh, migrations of evil, what do I mean by that, you ask me? Now, somebody migrated from this place and is headed the Western world or headed anywhere. But he didn't have anything, didn't have education. He's not going, go, he's not going to fit into the place where he's going to. And then when he arrived there, because he was forced to do the migration, when he arrived there without anything, the next thing that will happen is evil. The nation N forced the people into migration of death. Everywhere, every day, people are being killed in their numbers. Those that are surviving are surviving, but fear is gripping every person's heart. The people find no job and nothing. They didn't find anything. And then they are incarcerated. They are really enslaved. But then, I've told you that the nation end and the bulk of its peoples are in the overall program of God instruments. I said you are hearing revelation message. In the overall program of God, there are instruments. A nation is that which the Lord has decided to adopt and to take over in order to take over other nations and shake the world before the rapture takes place. That is his program. That is his program. And then, then designs a circumstance, designs something with which he wants to do what he has scheduled to do, what has been schemed. Remember that concerning the children of Israel, it had been schemed, and he had known the instrument of what he wanted to do. And then, at a particular point in time, and that's the time that in which we find ourselves, then an instrument has 
being skimmed and then brought forward. But it wasn't going to be just like the instrument of old and the design of old of emancipation was colossally opposed. Stiff opposition. So today, there is that stiff opposition. And that stiff opposition has melted the hearts of many people. Many people in church, including the people that are following the trend, people that are reading between the lines, people that don't belong to the nation end, but who know what God wants to do with the nation end? Who have the vision and who have the prophecy of what God wants to do? Everyone is saying, what? What is this? What are we seeing? And those that are inside are crying. And people are saying, oh, we are finished. And some people are saying, if it be like this, I will not go to church again. If it be so, I will drop the Bible. If it be so, I will not believe God again. I give you to understand. I give you to understand. I give you to understand that Israel eventually left Egypt. And therefore, I give you to understand that that which the Lord had designed with this place called end will come to pass. And nothing under the sun we prevent it. God is the master adapter. He adapts everything. He has factored everything. Hear it and hear it loud. He has factored everything. Everything is his agent, good or bad. He has factored everything and he decided that at the appropriate time, he will maneuver, he will maneuver, he will change and will change until that which he had announced will become a reality. So let no man's heart fail him. Remember that in times past we said, let no man's heart fail him. David came to the war front and the people's hearts have, had melted, including even the chief of the army, even Saul, everybody was panicking. But somebody came to the war front and said, let no man had fail him. God is the master and he is set to do something. And I tell you, God did what he was set to do. Therefore, Hear this and hear it loud and clear. In spite of all the things that people have gone through, in spite of all the uh, incarceration and impoverishment, in spite of the troubles, in spite of the insecurity, in spite of the economic downturn, in spite of schools being what they are, and the places that provide health care being what they are. God, who had arranged that the nation called N is an instrument, will be an instrument for his last day's uh, revival work, is yet at work, and he is in charge. He is the one that calls the shots. He has his mechanism. And his mechanism, sometimes his mechanism will not be known by anybody except he lets you know. But sometimes he will not let you know his mechanism, the ultimate. Can I tell you this testimony? That was, and uh, see, this testimony that I'm going to give to you, I want you to align it. Align it, to, align it to what we have said, what we have heard concerning, uh, concerning Egypt and Israel, and what we have heard concerning the 
people of the nation and in the nation and, and then you will see the similarity. And you will take consolation in the ability of the Almighty God, in the ability of the Almighty God. Can I tell you, God is the master scientist. All science that people are learning, technology, all belong to him. Now let me tell you the story of a particular person. This story is not fiction. The person is a personage. And a person has been testifying and testifying over there in the East on the thing that the Lord did for the, to the person. This person came under the hammer of the wicked one. And Christian, I know very well, over the years, not one year, not two years, not three years, not four years, over the years, came under hammer, under torture, under mesmerization. And I'm not telling you fiction. I do not need to call the person's name. A person may be in fellowship, and it is in fellowship even as, as we are talking, and he's listening. And he can say, yeah, yes, this is, this is me, this is me. And he has been testifying concerning over the years, the devil had a field there, tormenting, wanting to make her mad, wanting to, to finish her off. But you guess, guess what? Ministration was continually uh, served her all the time on the fact that God is in charge, on the fact that God's word, every line of scripture is true to the letter and does wonders, on the fact that what God has announced, he will surely do, on the fact that God is faithful, on the fact that they that serve him, he will listen to their prayers, on the fact that he honors those that honor him. And on and on and on. But it didn't appear that any of those things uh, was uh, uh, letting the enemy, the devil, would not uh, let this person go away. Torment, torture, incarceration, confusion. Then, in the hospital, today, tomorrow out, the next day back to hospital. And I remember a few years ago, maybe two years ago, now, what happened? While we are sitting behind the pulpit of many colors at the rock chapel of the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, the Spirit of the Lord said, call their name and told the people, Go and bring this person out from hospital because her case is not a hospital case. Thus said the Lord, God will use his own mechanism to set the woman, the person free. Take note, God would, will use his mechanism Listen to me, I didn't know what that mechanism was. I had no idea what that mechanism was until it took place. And now that mechanism is really, you can't understand it. You can't understand what happened. Think, think how you want to think. You cannot figure out what happened. What happened? There was a program... <laughs> Modest of people were there. Any of you that are listening have gone to the rock chapel, and the rock chapel was filled with people. At the point in time that this thing happened, this individual would not come into the midst of people, would not come into the midst of crowd of two, of three, or four, or five, and will not nearly be crazy, mad, because of what was happening within. 
And so as a result of that, this individual would not come into the crowd and then was going around the rock chapel looking for a comfortable place where the person would stay and be able to see the proceedings on the screen. And then was going around the rock chapel and went from this place I went to the main entrance and then came this way and then somewhere by the right. Now she saw that if she stayed there, she would see the screen. So he said to the person that was with her, put my seat here for me so that I can stay here and look across the doorway and see the screen and follow the proceedings. But you know what? He had as if it were somebody saying, enter this house. She had as it were somebody saying, enter this house. You know what? As soon as he crossed the doorway, the demons flew out. Tell me what was on the doorway. Tell me who kept the thing that is on the doorway. Till today we do not know what was on the doorway? Cross that doorway and enter the building. That building that you are afraid to enter because of the crowd. Cross that doorway, enter it. And as soon as entered it, freedom till I am talking. Praise God! That is uh, a testimony that uh, shows us, that tells you that if God would do that for an individual, for an individual, why will he not do it for a group of people, a bulk of people, or a people that he has earmarked to use? Why will he not do it? He did it for an individual who is calling upon him, whom he wants to use. He will much more do it for uh, for. For, for community that he has elected to use. So, I give you to understand that as Israel was freed from Egyptian bondage, so the people of this, the nation called En, who are in the program of God by divine arrangement, shall experience even that which can be likened to the experience that the children of Israel had from Egypt. And the experience of that lady that I gave to you now. What are you going to do? If you've been crying, my friend, clean your tears. If you've been sorrowing, my friend, Stop sorrowing. If you be been in confusion, my friend, let the confusion give way to clarity. Clarity on the basis of what you have had. Israel left Egypt eventually. Therefore, that which the Lord had designed, that which the Lord had designed, that which the Lord has designed, he will bring to pass. He will bring to pass. And there is no opposition that will be able to make it not happen. Listen to me. Listen to me attentively. He says, Praise waiting for thee, O God, in Zion. O God, who hear prayers, unto whom shall all flesh come. God that hears prayers. God that is faithful. God that arranges a program, arranges uh, something, designs something, and ensures that that thing which has been designed is executed. That is the one that we are talking about. 
before the year runs out or in the course of this year, we have said, he has said that going to be much of praise. I'm asking, uh, who is there among you that is preparing? You know that faith is that which does not look at the circumstances. I don't understand why people have forgotten the basic things. That which the Lord has spoken, if he has spoken, it is guaranteed. And if he spoke it to you, now, and there is a lot of opposition, now a lot of hindrances, are you expected to be considering the hindrances? Are you expecting to be musing on the hindrances? Or are you expected to be musing on what he has said? You are expected to be musing and soliloquizing on what he has said, not the hindrances. That is what every person in the watchman should begin to do right away. You cannot say that you have no information. You cannot say that the word of God, even the mind of God for the hour, is not in our midst. It is not given to us. So why worry when you can pray? And why worry when you can look at the person that has spoken? And when you can look back to what he has done in times past? Why worry when you can look back to the God of that experience? The God of the experiences that we have had. I am asking you, what actually is the big deal? In this matter. What is the big deal in this matter? What is the difficult thing in this matter? What is it that the Lord cannot handle? What is it that he cannot handle? Why panic? Why develop high blood pressure? Why does your heart rest? Quim, 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 quim. As if you have not seen how this ministry has, over the years, survived all the things that, that came against it because the Lord is the one that established it. I encourage every person to just shake your head and say, from this day, from this day, I cannot but think the thoughts that I should think. I have no problem. We don't have any problem. What gonna be, gonna be. What he has decided will be, will surely be. As the music ministers come on board once more, we will join them to sing the song that says, Victory Ahead. Victory Ahead is song at number 242. 242. Victory Ahead. And the lines are as follows. When the hosts of Israel, led by God, Round the walls of Jericho, softly trod, trusting in the Lord, the faith the conquerors tread. By faith they saw the victory ahead. David with a shepherd's sling and five stones made a giant on the field all alone. Trusting in the Lord, he knew what God had said. By faith, he saw the victory ahead. Daniel prayed unto the Lord thrice each day. Then unto the lion, then led the way. Trusting in the Lord, he did not fear or dread. By faith, he saw the victory ahead. Often with the carnal mind, I was tried. Asking for deliverance, often I cried. 
Trusting in the Lord, I reckoned I was dead. By faith, I saw the victory ahead. When like those who have gone before to that land by death, river cold and dark, I shall stand. Trusting in the Lord, I will not fear or dread. By faith, I see the victory ahead. By faith and by assurance and by the word of knowledge that we have had, we see a new end. A nation called end. We see a new one which the Lord has designed to take hold of in order to take hold of of the other place. Pastor, child of God, worker, trembling soul, stop trembling. Let the trembling soul stop trembling. Let every person lift up his or her head and say, by faith we see the victory ahead. Let's join and sing. Israel led by God round the walls of Jericho, south they trod. Trusting in the Lord, they felt the conqueror's tread. By faith, they saw the victory ahead. Victory ahead, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conqueror's tread. My faith is in the victory ahead. David with the shepherds king and five stones met the giants on the field all alone. Trusting in the Lord, he knew what God had said. By faith he saw the victory ahead, victory ahead, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the pump spread. By faith I see the victory ahead. And they prayed unto the Lord twice each day. Then unto the lions they left away. Trusting in the Lord, he did not fear or dread. By faith he saw the victory ahead. Victory ahead, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conqueror's tread. My faith is in the victory ahead. Often with a kind of mind, I was tried, asking for deliverance of thy pride. Trusting in the Lord, I reckoned I was dead. By faith I saw the victory ahead. Victory ahead, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conqueror's tread. By faith I see the victory ahead. Like those who are before to that land By this river cold and dark I shall stand Trusting in the Lord I will not fear or dread By faith I see the victory ahead Victory ahead, victory ahead Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conqueror's tread. My faith has seen the victory ahead. Victory ahead, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trust.
trusting in the Lord, I hear the conquest tread. My face I see the victory ahead. Victory ahead, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conquest tread. My faith I see the victory ahead. Victory ahead, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conquest tread. My faith I see the victory ahead. Victory ahead, victory ahead. Through the blood of Jesus, victory ahead. Trusting in the Lord, I hear the conquest tread. By faith I see the victory ahead. Victory ahead. Victory ahead. Jubilation ahead. Coming away. Remember the song that tells us that jubilation is coming our way. And I want you, music ministry men and women, let's tune up that song. Let the people sing and pray. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation. Is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Wherever you can remember that song appropriately, the way it was coined out by the Spirit of God in that day, let everybody. Raise up his or her voice while you are singing it. And after that you have sung it for a while, let everybody burst out into prayer, praising God and thanking God for what he has already designed to do. Because that which he has designed to do, he will surely do. I'm going to make a closing prayer. But this closing prayer does not stop what should be happening in the locations where the people have listened to this message titled, Israel was freed from Egypt eventually. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation. Is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way. Thank you, Lord, of our salvation. Because of who you are. Thank you because of the fact that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and them that dwell therein. 
from the north through to the south, Lord, and from the east through to the west, the northeast, the southeast, the southwest, the northwest, all those cardinal directions belong unto thee. All the nations in the north as well as the nations in the south, as well as in the nations and the peoples of the east and the peoples of the west and all the places that I've mentioned, they all are known by thee, one by one. Everything that is done in the secret, all the meetings, all the occultic places of concourse, all the political places of concourse, all the booze places, grandfather in heaven, are known unto thee. Lord, I thank you because it is time for somebody to show who owns the world. Lord, it is time for you to show that somebody owns the world. Not any other person other than the Lord. Thank you very much. In times past, Lord, you showed yourself strong. When they did what they pleased in times past, even the people of nowhere, you did also what you pleased. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah did what they pleased. And then you did what you pleased. Precious Father. The people of the present world appear to be saying we do what we please. But you are saying I also do what I please. Precious Lord. Here you have your people gathered together in the place called the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Tell my rock of ages. And I pray that as they pray, Lord, as they pray, as they sing concerning jubilation, eternal Father in glory, let the things they say and the things that they sing on, let those things influence the Lord. Thank you very much because you are an influenceable being. They influence you of old. Abraham influenced you of old. Moses influenced you of old for good. Joseph influenced you of old, Lord. Let the people influence you today and let them get that which the people that influence you for good of old God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, Lord. Thank you for answer to prayers. Thank you for answer to prayers. Lord, every individual, every individual that has, as it were, even something that is likened to the case that these people of Israel had when they were in the land of Egypt. Lord in glory, there may be individual incarcerations. There may be individual impoverishment. There may be cases. People are held down. Terrible, terrible circumstances are holding them captive. Oh Lord God of heaven. And we are saying Israel was freed eventually from Egypt. And that's what we had. Lord let that thing that happened of old reflect in the individual lives who are like Israel in the land of Egypt, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is what I want to, I want to hear testimonies on what the Lord has done. Not just what we talked about, but individual emancipation. Thank you very much. Individual, Lord, emancipation must be the Lord of people in the very old places where they had what was the, what was there. And they will come 
even before time, to jubilate or to dance and to give glory to God for what you have done. Lord, I am sure, I am sure, very sure, very sure, blessed Redeemer, very sure that it will happen. In Benin, it will happen. Lord, in Onisha, it will happen. And in the places where they have gathered and listened to me with attention and with some euphoria, with some interest, Lord, let all those places where the people listen to the word of this man with great attention, let this word hear the great dividend in the lives of those people in the name of Jesus Christ before it is the maximum. The maximum is what we are asking at your hand to recreate this place, to take over this place, to make it good. Having begun, precious Father, remember that your rule, your principle is, I will begin. And when I begin, I make an end. When I begin, I complete. Precious Father, you have begun. You have begun. You begun even the business of uh, freedom. You began it. You began it. And uh, despite the opposition, you brought it to pass. You have begun it this day. And despite the opposition, Lord, you bring it to pass. So that at the end of the day, the people will continue jubilating and jubilating and saying, Come and see what the Lord has done. Lord, I pray that every person that has born into one kind of incarceration or the other because of a circumstance, I pray that as they finish listening and praying to you, that all those people, men and women, will have their magnificat, each one of them, like Hannah had in her day like Moses had in his day, like Blessed Mary had in her day. Thank you for answer to prayers, because this is what must happen. Be thou magnified for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. And now this prayer, the conclusion of this prayer does not conclude, conclude the fellowship. Let the people continue thanking God and jubilating and singing the song until every person is done until every person is satisfied. God bless you for listening to the perfect law of liberty. Jubilation, jubilation, jubilation is coming our way.